So following treatment of early stage breast cancer, 20 to 30 percent of patients will later relapse, but there is no standard of care available to detect molecular residual disease and direct further therapy to prevent or defer relapse. Circulating tumor DNA testing in plasma may identify MRD that persists after completion of therapy with ctDNA detection associated with a very high risk of future relapse. Niraparib is a highly selective PARP inhibitor licensed for the treatment of ovarian cancer, but we also know that 60% of triple negative breast cancers have a homologous recombination DNA repair deficiency. And so ZEST was designed as a phase three randomized double blind clinical trial of MRD directed therapy in breast cancer to aim to assess whether niraparib could improve disease free survival in patients who'd completed treatment but had ctDNA detected with no evidence of radiographic recurrence. So the study recruited stage 1 to 3 breast cancer, triple negative regardless of BRCA status, or tumor BRCA if they were hormone receptor positive. So tumor BRCA means BRCA testing in the tumor that will pick up both germline and somatic BRCA mutations. The patients had completed standard therapy with curative intent, although they were able to be on adjuvant endocrine therapy or on adjuvant pembrolizumab to start ctDNA surveillance. No sign of a clinical um, recurrence, and if they'd had neoadjuvant chemotherapy and no response at all, they were not allowed into the study. Patients had ctDNA surveillance. Those who had ctDNA detected had staging scans and were off study if they were occurred. And patients were randomized in two cohorts, one for tumor BRCA mutations and two for triple negative that were tumor BRCA wild type, randomized between niraparib and placebo. The disease-free survival was the initial primary endpoint, but this was changed to safety and tolerability after enrollment was stopped. So this study used the Signaterra tumor-informed ctDNA assay. Surveillance was conducted every two, or th two to three months. Sufficient patients um, were planned to be enrolled to randomize 200 patients in cohort one and 600 in two, but the study was terminated after 1,900 patients had been recruited into ctDNA surveillance with only 40 randomized. So here's the consort diagram. So 1,900 were entered into ctDNA surveillance. 147 were ctDNA positive, so 8% overall. Only four patients had a recurrence without prior ctDNA detection. So very high sensitivity for future recurrence. But of the patients who are ctDNA positive, 50% had a radiologic recurrence when they were ctDNA positive. A significant number of patients also subsequently failed the inclusion and exclusion criteria, and so in the end only 40 were randomized, 18 to niraparib and 22 to placebo. So looking at the characteristics of the surveillance population, 88% had triple negative, 22% had BRCA mutations, um, and then on the right, 25% were stage one, 40% stage two, and 36% um, were stage three. First of all, looking at associations with ctDNA detection, these are those that associate with um, risk of relapse. So low in stage one, only 2.3%, rising up to 13.7% with stage three. And again, similar associations with pathological complete response, only 2.1% in patients who'd had a path CR, going up to 13.7% in patients who did not have a path CR. Looking at timing of ctDNA detection from the end of definitive treatment, this was predominantly a study of triple negative breast cancer. ctDNA detection rates were highest in those patients who had their test within three months of end of treatment, and then this subsequently falls. And in triple negative breast cancer, 60% of patients were ctDNA detected within six months from the end of definitive treatment. We next tried to tease out the factors that are associated with diagnosing a recurrence at the same time of ctDNA detection. 
So first of all, looking at the study visits. So those patients on their very first test or visit had a 52.5% rate of recurrence when they're staging scans. And then in subsequent visits after an initial negative test, this fell but only slightly to 43.8%. On the right is the rate is the ctDNA level, the burden of ctDNA at detection. On the left, pre-screening visit one in pink of those patients who recurred, and they had a substantially higher level of circulating tumor DNA than those patients with occult disease. And then on the right, a pre-screening visit two onwards, that so these patients had a negative ctDNA test and then converted to being positive. And you can see that some of these patients had a very high level of ctDNA, even though their test was negative only approximately three months earlier. And this really tells us something about the pace of disease in these patients, and therefore the difficulty of trying to intercept that with ctDNA, although potentially more sensitive assays could have picked it up earlier. And then finally, just looking at the randomized patients, because of small numbers, both cohorts were combined. I just want to highlight that in the patients treated with niraparib, only one of them had a tumor BRCA mutation. And here are the data for recurrence-free interval. We must, of course, be very cautious. This is only 40 patients who are randomized. But there was an improvement in median recurrence-free interval from 5.4 months on placebo to 11.4 on niraparib with a hazard ratio of 0.66, but with wide confidence intervals well crossing one, um, reflecting the small number of patients randomized. And I just need to highlight that investigators were unblinded at the time study enrollment was terminated. And so just to conclude, ZEST was the first, three trial, first phase three trial of MRD-directed therapy in breast cancer, but was terminated early because of the low randomization rate. This in part reflected the broad entry criteria, including low risk patients that resulted in relatively low rates of ctDNA detection, but also a relatively high rate of metastatic disease at the time of ctDNA detection. For patients who are triple negative, ctDNA detection occurred most frequently on the first test with 60% within the first six months after the end of treatment, consistent with the early recurrence that is typical of triple negative. And then there was this high rate of radiographic recurrence at the time of ctDNA detection, providing support for strategies to start ctDNA testing earlier in the trajectory of triple negative breast cancer. And of course, the trial was not powered to evaluate the effect of niraparib versus placebo. However, recurrence-free interval was numerically longer with niraparib. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Nick. So um, the apparent lack of lead time between the ctDNA detection and the <coughs> radiologic recurrence suggests the possibility that the kinetics of this disease are so fast <coughs> that ctDNA may not be, you know, um, may not be that helpful, or the problem could have been the essay also. So what are your thoughts yeah, on I th that? I think, I think it's a really important point. So this was predominantly a study of triple negative breast cancer, so 88%. Correct. And we know patients who have residual disease after their neoadjuvant chemotherapy have a very high risk of early relapse. And one of the factors, I think, is just what you're saying, is rapidity of the disease yeah. coming back can be so fast, it's actually difficult to capture it Catch and it, intervene think, yeah. with a ctDNA assay. Yet, you, patients who are ctDNA positive after their neoadjuvant chemo and before surgery have a very poor prognosis. So potentially we should be bringing the ctDNA analysis much earlier than we did in this trial that needed patients to have completed earlier. Thank you. But I also agree, but also, sorry, Carlos, with your second point, which is actually there is continual evolution of the, of the assays yeah. to make them more sensitive, and that would very likely help as well. Yeah. Question, please. Hi, uh, Aaron Talent with Oncology News Central. Dr. Arteaga, would it be possible just to give us your thoughts on, <coughs> on the takeaways from this study? I think I just shared my thoughts. <laughs> no, I, I know. I, well, but, yeah. 
I think uh, ctDNA is definitely a way to detect minimal residual disease. The problem is that in some cases there may not be enough lead time between that detection and clinical recurrence as we usually diagnose it. Maybe it may happen in other tumor type that is not triple negative, maybe in the ER positives and with better assays. So this is <coughs> work in evolution, work in progress. Uh, one question for Dr. Turner perhaps mm -hmm. will be his thoughts on whether this is ready for clinical practice because patients are having these essays done yeah. and they're asking us what to do about it. And these essays tell us, yeah, they, <coughs> there is tumor there somewhere. It's about to rear its ugly head now or maybe in several months down the road, but doesn't tell us what to treat the patient with. Just tells us, yeah, there's cancer, but doesn't tell us we should use this drug or this combination. That's important for the public to know. But Nick, maybe you can expand well, on that. Well, Carlos, I, I think you kind of answered the question in yeah. how you asked it in many ways, which is, you know, we've shown here that ctDNA can pick up nearly all of the people who are going to relapse. But we don't really know yet how to use that information to guide therapy and whether identifying it early can improve outcome. And so it actually cautions about the use of these tests in routine clinical practice until we really know how to use them to improve outcome. Because at the moment, if you do one of these tests, you find ctDNA, but you can't see anything on the scan, we don't actually know how to use that information to treat those people, yet that finding can be very difficult for patients. So we're making progress. We're having some studies that unfortunately aren't working, but we're on the way to identifying the clinical situations, hopefully, where we really can use these tests to improve outcome in the future. Thank you. <clears throat> there being uh, uh, our colleagues that treat patients with leukemia, they <coughs> use MRD <coughs> essays, you know, more than us. So maybe we can learn from them how they're developing those tests. So any other questions? Any issues with, uh, tell us about consenting patients. It seems to me that that's not an easy consent conversation to have. Uh, no, actually, conversely, no. Con the consent conversation in this study was not, not hard. People not hard. really want to go on. But, you know, people love the concept, of course, of a blood test that can Even help predict when, whether the cancer's going to come back. <coughs> um, and in some ways, that was one of the problems on the study, that lots of low-risk patients who of course still have the fear of recurrence really wanted to get on the study and that's really good on how we would want to use these tests in clinical practice but actually it's a real problem for the study if you have a big cohort of low-risk patients who aren't going to convert to being ctDNA positive so you don't end up with enough patients to randomize and so we do have this tension in clinical trials between how we might want to use it in clinical practice, but actually in a trial, we need a much higher risk patient population. Mm, yeah. So that's good to hear that even though patients may be randomized to the placebo <coughs> arm, they were comfortable. Oh, they, they were the comfortable study. in the yeah. study, yeah, they were. It speaks to the way uh, patients with breast cancer had led the world you know, <coughs> in embracing clinical trials as a way to advance treatments of the disease and triaging those treatments that do not work. I have one question from uh, the Zoom. This is from Marcy Landsman with Cancer Today. She asks, in the study, how did you manage patients if their levels were elevated? Were the patients treated if their ctDNA was elevated? How was that handled in the clinic? Well, so I, I'm not sure I absolutely understand the question, so I'll give it a go. So patients who are ctDNA detected but recurred will have had standard practice for recurrent triple negative breast cancer. But the study, of course, then aimed to randomize the patients who are ctDNA detected but hadn't recurred. Um, and that's the, the randomization that we've seen. Thank you. <coughs> Sorry, uh, Lynn Peterson with Trends in Medicine. So I looked at this extensively last year, but the problem is if you don't know how to treat them, haven't you just frightened the women? Oh, yeah. And um, the women I interviewed after the meeting who had breast cancer and said, would you want to have this test? And everybody said yes. And I said, but 
we also might not know where it is, and we might not know how to treat it, or if the drugs work. And then nobody wanted it. Yeah. And that's sort of... Oh, we I, haven't progressed from that. I think your question is excellent, and I think this is a very, very important point for physicians in counseling patients about these test results, because everybody wants the test, expecting it won't find something and they'll feel great. But actually, it's very important to help people think through the consequences of what happens if the blood test does detect something, and yet we can't find something on the scan and we're uncertain what to do, and that could be very harmful for somebody. And so I think your point is an excellent one, and it's really important for physicians to counsel people when they come with requests to do these, to do these tests currently. And I think the, the one other point is that we've got to tie it to treatment, because so let's say we even do find it, but do we know that neoparavir or XYZ yeah. drug is going to work. It may be a very different cancer. Well, I mean, of course, that's exactly what this study right. was aiming yeah. to do. But in yeah. the end, we it had didn't. just a too low risk patient population that was going in, not enough people converting to ctDNA being detected. So I agree. And there are multiple other studies, including those in ER positive breast cancer, where, it's pro where it is definitely easier to intercept the recurrence because the pace of disease is slower. And I think we are really hopeful that those studies will come through in time.